Hi guys. Okay, so I'd like to start by explaining a few things about what we're going to do before we actually go into it. Firstly, when I say a persistent version of Linux, what that means is once you've put it onto your drive here, it'll then save all the things that you've done when using it, and you can take it out and you can put it into someone else's his computer and whatever, just boot up from that. and you'll, It's like carrying around your own little PC on a memory stick such as this one. As for Linux, if you don't know what Linux is, I'll just give you a very, very quick overview of it. It's a free open source operating system. You've probably used it at some point in your life, but you might not have actually noticed it, it that it is Linux that you're running. Because uh, for the biggest example I can think of is Android operating system on your phone. That is actually based off Linux, the Chrome OS, lots of things like this, and lots of like electrical devices that you get, it will ha they'll have a Linux kernel on it just because it's free and open source any manufacturer can take it edit it about however they want and make their own thing with it some features about Linux that you might might like to know is most of the distros come with many different ver there, are, there are many 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 different versions of Linux because Linux is kind of the bait is like a base here yeah, and then many people can go shoot up and they can go wherever you like with it and do it but you all have the same but they all have the same share the same basis to it so you have like the one we're using today is going to be Linux Mint. But then you've also got like Ubuntu and K Ubuntu. Is it K Ubuntu? I don't know. Like Debian and lots of like Puppy Linux and just there's so many other ones like that. They're all based off the same base, but then they go all over the place. Like Mint, for instance, comes with lots of standard software built in, and it's all free free stuff. So you're not paying for any of this. And there's like they're like alternatives to stuff that you might have on your PC. For instance, if you've got Microsoft Office, you can have LibreOffice, which is actually what I use in Windows anyway, because for someone like me, it, it fits perfectly. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that you'd find with like the Microsoft version and like the alternatives to like Photoshop. They're not going to have all the bells and whistles that Adobe have on theirs, but they're free. So for instance, you've got GIMP, which is GNU image manipulation program, which is kind of an alternative to Photoshop. Like I say, it hasn't got the bells and whistles, but it is free. And LibreOffice, which is your spreadsheets, your word processing, yeah, anything what else you do in Office, um, presentation stuff, and things like that. And that type of thing would be ideal. If you're doing that type of thing, it'd be ideal to put on one of these and you can take it around, boom, run it from your own, your own desktop, so to speak, from your own PC. Now, for me, the downside to Linux is that it, and I think people will probably disagree with this, but to me it's kind of fragmented a little bit because you've got all these different distros and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all compatible with each other, the things that are made for one. For like The main example I can think of at the moment is Steam, is for Linux, is made to run with Ubuntu, but it's not compatible with any of the others unless you do a bit of tinkering. And if something goes wrong in Linux, it can involve like going into codes and changing it. And that for like people who aren't like computer coders and etc. and like or like really into this type of thing, that's a little bit scary and they'd rather stick with Windows or OS X or anything like that that's gonna be like just there, it's gonna work. Oh sorry, did I say work? I've got Windows eight point one. Um <clears throat> Also, the driver support for Linux has always been, uh, up till now, it's been a bit iffy. It has started to get a lot better. I remember the first time I tried Linux and I plugged my keyboard in and like the backlighting wouldn't work and stuff. Like, oh, it's not supported on Linux. Your driver can't get a driver for that. That was quite a long time ago, I admit. But especially with the Steam OS coming out now, there's going to be a lot more support for things like this coming, especially for like peripherals that are going to be used specifically for it, like keyboards and mice. You will definitely be getting the driver support for them. And graphics cards for instance i mean nvidia and amd have never been that great especially nvidia and actually uh giving you drivers to run on linux but with the steam os it that will absolutely change definitely okay the final thing you need for this obviously is a usb memory stick i'm using one of these if the camera can focus on that i can't really see the picture there we go so it's a sandisk extreme usb 3 flash drive 16 gigabytes usable, 14.9 usable, with a read speed of 190 megabytes per second and a write speed of 55. I just read that off the box because I didn't know it off my heart. To be honest, you probably saw it before me. Okay, so now I've given you a little bit, little bit of background on it. Let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, we want to go to linuxliveusb.com. You'll come up with that page here. I've, now I've cut the URL off the top here, so uh, you can put it into Google or you can just, it's linuxliveusb.com. So we come to this page. 
And if we go to the download section here, click download Lily. Just click right here. Okay, so this also includes a user guide. We want to go into the select a source page and go into the support matrix page. Okay, so this is the page that will display all the distros that are compatible with this piece of software. See, there is, these are all the different versions that are compatible with it. So, but personally, we are going to be using Linux Mint 16 Petra, the Mate version DVD. So it'll just be an ISO file. So if we click on that, then we go to download. It'll take us to the Mint site. And we've got to make sure we get the Mate version and not the Cinnamon version, because this is the one that's compatible with it. Though so that's just the type of desktop for the same thing. And you can actually go for the 32-bit. I just went for the 64-bit out of habit, to be honest. It's not going to make much difference. Okay, so once we've got that, let's open up the software. This is it. This is the Linux Live USB Creator. So first things first, make sure you've got your USB memory stick into your computer. See, mine's my F drive here. You only need, a, you, you could probably do this with an 8 gigabyte stick, I've got 14.9, 16 gigabyte stick, so you just select that, it has to be FAT32, You can when you're doing a format from Windows you can select FAT32. So you select on your ISO image there, find the one that you don't, you see I've got quite a few different types here, but we want the Linux 16 Mint Mate, Mint Mate, there we go, it always says something about not, compatible but it is trust me I've used it if we get the persistence and we can move it all the way up to four gigabytes or 4090 megabytes I should say that it only goes up that high because that's the max size of a partition on a fat 32 formatted drive but to be honest this isn't really for using like huge files or something it's just for something to carry around once you've done that you don't need to change anything on step four unless you need to format the drive and it's got something on it but I would pre-do that and you can just click on the lightning bolt in the bottom corner. For the sake of time, I shall now speed this up. It takes around the five minutes mark or something like that. It's not too long. Okay, so once it's done, it'll open this page automatically in your default browser. The thing I want to draw your attention to here is that it cannot be used in a virtual box. Now, virtual box is a part of this that we're not going to be looking at where you can open up your Linux distro inside Windows and have a look around there but the persistence doesn't work in that so it's only good if you want to have a look around so yeah okay so that's basically it that is on the drive now you want to uh, if you're going to try it straight away in, on your PC you want to take it out safely move harder obviously and then put it back in because then your computer will d be definitely recognizing it as a boot Okay, so now we're ready to test it. So if you shut down your computer, if you haven't done already, make sure it's in, boot it up. And we want to go either into your boot settings or go into the BIOS. If you see here, I didn't have a boot settings, I have to go into the BIOS. Now, I'm using my test system here, which doesn't have any hard drives in it, so I've literally just plugged it in. What I want to draw your attention to here, we want to boot into the non-UEFI. So we want to make this one, make sure you're booting from this one and not the UEFI because if you do it from the other one it will just go straight into like either installing it or running it in live mode which is not what we're interested in. So after you've done that just save and exit and it should reboot and go straight into the persistence screen or the menu for it anyway. So you say automatically boot in 10 seconds but if you press return during that it will then bring up this menu and though you can't see it very well on the screen there. So let me just, I'll quickly just arrow, arrow this down so you can see what that says. That actually just says persistent mode and that's what we're interested in. I should say if you just leave it for the 10 seconds then that will load up in that mode anyway. You get that scary screen where it just displays a whole load of stuff and then Linux Mint boots up. So here we go, this is the standard Linux Mint desktop. Obviously this is all customizable as you'd expect. So what we want to do to test for it, we want to just make a random folder. You can call it whatever you want, I just leave left mine as untitled. And there we go, put that in the middle of the desktop. And just, just to be sure, I'm gonna put a text document in there. So yeah, we'll just write text 
I'm just trying to test into this. Select my desktop, go into that folder. You can rename it whatever you like. Tester. And save. There we go. So now we've got that there. We try and reboot. So you go to quit there and then you click on restart. You don't have to do anything with the bars this time, it should just go straight into it. This time I'll leave it on the automatic boot so you can see that it just goes straight into it. But if you wanted to, you could just press again and it would do the exact same thing. You could select persistent mode. So here we go, we load up and you see our untitled folder is in the middle there, it has saved it. My documents in there. There we go. Congratulations, you now have a persistent version of Linux Mint 16 on a USB memory stick. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you have any comments, let me know what is your favourite Linux distro? Have you ever tried Linux before? Is it something that you'd be interested in trying? Or has it always been a bit, no, it's not compatible with anything, I'll stick with Windows. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and all that stuff. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you next time.